Hello fine people, this is Jerry Travis Smith with you and I thought I would show you all today how to package up a lesson in a folder with all kinds of resources. It might be PowerPoints, it might be Word documents, um, things that the students fill out, etc. And uh, how that you can put those on a flash drive and then the students be able to open them on their Chromebook from the flash drive and do the work. Now right here I have a lessons folder on my desktop. You could put that anywhere you wanted, it really doesn't matter. And if I go into it, you'll see that uh, in this example I've got digital literacy hyphen week 01. Now I'll get into it later why I put the name of the class and not just week 1 and why I put week 01. But for now, let's just go into this and see what I have in here. So you can see I have an assortment of documents. Now an actual week would have a lot more than this. But we have a movie file, we have a PowerPoint, there's a Word file, and a vocabulary list. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make a document in here that uh, the student can use as an answer sheet so that when they turn it back into you, uh, their answers could be topped in here depending on, you know, uh, what, uh, what it's supposed to be. And then inside of this document, you could have, uh, you know, whatever. Obviously, it's blank because I just made it. And uh, there we go. That looks like a pretty good lesson. But the point is, the student will be able to come in here and type in whatever you want. Now, here is the part that you guys may or may not understand how to do. I'm going to get back into Word. Okay, and we'll just do a blank document, make this bigger as well. So here's the part that's a little different, uh, but this will make all the difference in the world, I think, as far as the students knowing what to do, where to go. We're basically going to be creating a structure for all these files directly inside of this Word document with hyperlinks. So let's say that uh, we'll just call it week one instructions and you could pretty it up however you wanted, but I'm going to keep this real simple for what we're doing. Okay, so now we've got kind of a little step-by-step uh, -step, uh, plan, you know, what we want them to look at and so forth. And you could actually put anything in here, the same as you would a detailed syllabus. You could put any instructions. I mean, this is literally just a Word document. Here is the thing that may make life easier for the students. Okay, and that is we're going to put links in here to these things. So you highlight what you want to become linkable or linked. And you can right click and go to hyperlink. Okay, and then I need to point to my desktop where I have my lessons folder. And I want them to look at this PowerPoint first and notice if they were just to open this inside of their um, machine, it may not have them in the order that we would want. So there you go, we've got that. And then we've got, uh, we can put a link to the vocabulary. Okay, and for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to remember where I was at, but that's okay. Because we just want to make this as organized as possible for the students. And I can actually do a sub bullet right here. Okay, and we could, we could put a link to the answer sheet that they need to work with. Now, if you don't want to have to right click and go to insert hyperlink, you can do control K at the same time on your keyboard and uh, that way it just speeds it up a little bit. And obviously this answer sheet uh, does not really go with this, but let's just roll with it like it does, because uh, this is just an example. And then you could highlight this whole thing here. I'll do Control-K. Let's go to Desktop. 
Let's go to lessons and assignment one, chronological order. And then I could highlight video on four areas of computer. Or whatever, it doesn't really line up too well, but that's okay, it's no big deal. Now, here is the, uh, the magical part to all this that will make it so that uh, the kids will be able to open it um, on their Chromebook and then navigate to the files in whatever order you want by clicking on the links. So we're gonna go to file and save as, and then <clears throat> I'm gonna put these instructions right in the lesson folder. And what I could do is put in is zero one instructions. Okay, and if you do this every single week, the students will open the folder with the expectation that their instructions are gonna be hiding in there. Now, in order to make this work, I can't save it as a Word document and have it linked that way, okay? So what I'm gonna do is hit a drop down and the magic is right here. We're gonna save this as a web page, okay? Save it as a web page. And this instructions is going to have a uh, .htm file extension. And when the student goes to open that, guess where it's gonna go? It'll open in the browser on a Chromebook, okay? Now it changes the view, and if you don't like the way that looks, that's fine. You can go to view and go to print layout to see it the way that it always was. But really a web page shows up in Word like this. Now the beauty of this is, since we saved it with Word, we can open it back up in Word and make any changes we want. So it's not like it's a one-shot kind of deal. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Let's go back into our folder here. And you can see now that we have a, um, a web file or an HTML file. If I go up to view and turn on my file name extensions, you can see it's .htm, and that's a, a web document, okay? And um, these are, you know, all the file extensions for my other documents. Okay, so now we are done with this lesson. Okay, and I can even test this out on a Windows computer too. Works a little different on Windows actually. But when I double click this, it opens the browser. And now I can click on History of Computers, it downloads it right here, and they can click on it and open it. Right? But the power of this is for the Chromebook, not for Windows machines or Macs. However, it could be used the same with Safari uh, or anything on Windows as well. All right, so now let's get this over onto the student's flash drive. Let's say we're sending a flash drive home with them. Notice how I put the name of the class, then a hyphen, and week zero one. Now, the reason I did it this way is on a Chromebook, it sorts everything alphabetically by default. So when the student opens the flash drive, all the stuff for a particular class will be uh, together. So all the digital literacy folders will be one after the other. And the reason that I do zero one instead of just one is this way it will sort properly because if, if you have something like week 15, week 15 will override week one if you don't put the zero first. So it's all about having it sort um, properly for the students. Now, uh, you may be thinking, well, why don't, on the flash drive, why don't you just make a folder called digital literacy and then do week zero one, week zero two? My thing is this, we are going to have to deploy this quickly. In other words, we'll be loading up many, many flash drives. So what we need to do in this case is make it so we can dump this to the root of the drive or the very top level of the flash drive. So what I'm gonna do is right click on this uh, digital literacy week zero one and it, 
uh, in Windows, you've got a thing that says Send To, and then your flash drive will be listed right here. So there's my USB drive. And I click that, and it should do the copy. It'll be really fast because uh, this is not really a, uh, a big lesson. There was a video file in there, so that is taking a little longer than the rest of it. But you get the idea, okay? Okay, so now that is done. If we click over on the flash drive here, you can see there's the flash drive. And here's the files and everything. And it does create a folder in here because we saved it as a web page. There's some uh, documents that go with that in this instructions.htm. And you can see that if I click on anything, just like whenever we had it saved on the hard drive, it opens it up. So now I'm going to switch over to my son's Chromebook and I'll show you what happens when he plugs the fl flash drive in and what it would look like for the student and how easy it is for him to hop around the uh, documents. All right, so here I am on my son's Chromebook and what you'll notice right here is that I am not connected to Wi-Fi or Ethernet or anything else, okay? So it's very important because if this didn't work offline, then there's no point in doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in this flash drive that we already prepared. And there it is. Okay. So if I just tap that, it opens up the flash drive. And you can see that we've got digital literacy week 01 that we created. And then the student would go to instructions.htm. <clears throat> now you can see this little uh, index that we made with links to everything. And if I click this, it opens up this PowerPoint. Notice this is not a Google Doc because um, it's got the P and that's not the, the Google Slides um, symbol. Okay, so that's easy enough for the student to do. Um, and then they can look at the vocabulary. That's just a text file. Now, let's say that they're ready to go do this answer sheet for the vocabulary questions. One thing that I misspoke about earlier, because I, I guess I didn't understand it myself for sure, is when the kids come in here to start answering, they will have to save the document back to the flash drive. Okay, it doesn't automatically save there. So you'll notice if I start typing, it says edits will not be saved automatically. So they do have to do save now. And the thing is, it may drop them back into their my files or their documents or downloads or whatever. Okay, and if that's the case, they're going to have to know how to get back to the folder that they need to put this in. Okay, so I'm just going to go right back to the folder and you can save over top of it. And then file saved. All edits will now be saved automatically. So they do have to save it the first time to kick off automatic um, saving of changes. Now, this is something I was unfamiliar with up until a few years ago. I noticed that students are so used to everything auto-saving that they will actually not even try to save whenever they get in one of our classes that has software that doesn't save by itself. So that is something that we're going to have to address and I may make a training on that to put out to them. Okay, so I'll go ahead and close this. Now I did manage to close out the entire thing. I should have uh, left the instructions up, but I'll just show you one more thing. If there is Hello, a video, you can Alex click on from it. Music and today I'm gonna... So that about wraps it up for this. If you have any more questions as to how to load stuff on a flash drive and set up this little index with links and stuff, you can email me at jerry.smith at and I'll do my best to get back with you. Thanks.